Hello Teacups, what's Broom? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you for your patience. I was intending to react a little bit sooner, but she was going on stream for a lot of hours. Um, I'm in my long weekend right now, so I've got a little bit more time for the next four days, and then I've only got a week left of work, and then we done. It's very exciting, but she put in a lot of hours this week, and I was looking through some of it. I couldn't keep up with all of it, but it was just all saying she wasn't going to talk about Nada and then constantly talking and then cycling back into rage and then talking again and then oh Dee Dee's better off with Dee Dee and then oh I hate Dee Dee and all her usual stuff and I was just looking at it like nah I, I don't have the room to spin in these circles right now I just don't <laughs> so unfortunately I just couldn't do the thing I downloaded one started cutting it down and then gave up <laughs> So today we have decided to go for the recap instead of the react because it's just easier on me for the charmingly named Muck Gunts. Now I chose this one because although she couldn't resist talking about Nadra a little, um, she did mostly keep on to other points and so that made it a bit of a relief compared to everything else. But we'll mention a couple of things. So I've got my notes and we'll just get through them. So she starts, the camera gets turned on while she's eating McDonald's. Even though she seems to be in quite serious financial trouble at the moment, I don't think, well, I know it wasn't the stream because I've just watched this stream, but um, in one of the streams recently, her camera she's got that follows her around revealed that her TV was gone and it, you know, it turned out she had sold it to get some money because she broke. And for someone who claimed to earn 15,000 this month and she's still a week away from payday, that's, that's a lot. That is a lot of spending, that's a lot of mismanagement and it's a bit weird, not weird for her, but weird to a logical person to see her eating takeout, even if it's something cheap like McDonald's, when she literally is selling her TV for a little bit of cash and has Remember she mentioned that she had borrowed money or her family were helping her out in that kind of nebulous way where she admits everything and nothing. Um, it's an odd choice, but here we are. She did the thing. Um, speaking of money, someone in a chat, I think, mentioned Bitcoin. Could you imagine? So she was shocked that the stock market was going down and that, you know, Oh, a recession, I should save my money. I'm like, bitch, what money? Stop wasting your money, that would be a good start. Have you canceled HelloFresh yet? I'm betting she hasn't. But for a second, could you imagine, imagine Foodie trying to play the market if she was doing like stocks and trading, day trading probably because that's Foodie all over. It just harkens back to that time where she was doing a bit more gambling at the casino. Do you remember back when? I feel like it was either the first or quite an early uh, confirmation of the financial toll Nada was taking on her when um, she had given him a load of money for the casino that he'd lost. I think it was about $2,000, something big like that. And um, this just, this talking point reminded me a lot of that. <laughs> Foodie, don't try and get financial now in this way. Like, do the responsible thing. <laughs> Please. Anyone in her chat, please stop talking about Bitcoin because if she gets interested, we think she's badly off now. She's just going to convince herself that investing is the responsible thing to do and do it in the worst possible way. Especially as, could you imagine, she can't think, she can't plan what she's going to do tomorrow without having a panic attack and four days in bed. Like, could you imagine her trying to like invest in the market and then leave it there long enough to actually have it do some good so she said she had company this weekend um also connected to the idea of company i think it was after this stream she posted and um, what are you doing Chantel? she posted a picture that she covered up the face with like an emoji um but she said oh i found Dee Dee's ex on tinder do you dare me i was like oh god no also, like the little troll and me, I'm waiting for the Chantal and Dee Dee's ex are waiting for it. Possibly followed by the Dee Dee takes her to court for harassment arc because that would look pretty bad. Some people have said in my comments after I said that last time, 
that Didi would potentially have a case. They were like, no, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of confusion because she gets very confused um, when she's angry at Nada about something Didi's doing. She considers them one entity, but actually it would be Didi potentially theoretically suing her, not Nada. And I really do think for harassment, let's say, she would have a case. Now, defamation, you have to prove harm. So the job thing is a whole nother conversation because that was her choice. But harassment? Yeah. Looking up her exes, her exes on Tinder, and then like going out and parking outside their house, turning up unexpectedly, the constant, constant rage when she talks about Dee Dee for hours and hours and hours over days and days and days. Yeah, I think she's got a case for harassment in sitting down in front of a judge or aura, whoever, and being like, yeah, I went looking for her ex on Tinder. Just doesn't strike a very good tone now, does it? Like, Jesus. I know that Dee Dee recently came to the front of the camera and in uh, Nada's, it was either a stream or a video or something. But for a lot of this, she's been off camera. It's not the same as two YouTubers having a tiff, you know? And, oh, Chantel's just digging the hole deeper, let's put it that way. But anyway, I'm assuming the company this weekend is um, Motorbike Man. And um, she, she's very much like, well, I can't tell you what he does because I don't want to dox him, but he's in healthcare, but he's not a doctor. And I'm like, if you can't tell people what he does, don't tell people what he does. She has played this game before and she's lost many a time. Please stop doing this to people. She also mentioned like she can't go a whole weekend. She's probably going to visit this weekend. She can't go a whole weekend without being on live. So maybe she'll go live from his place and then he'll be at the side. Depends what he's comfortable with. And I'm sitting here like, I know we know, I know we know how obsessed with the internet she is and the level of attention she gets from it. Um, to the point where if she were ever to go to therapy and discuss things, social media addiction would be a big conversation I'd want to have and what she gets out of it. But how on one hand can you be like, I don't want to dox him, and the other be like, yeah, I'll go live from his house. Like, what are you doing? We know when she went live from that other friend's place, she immediately doxed them with their wall art. Like, come on now. You can last a weekend, and if you can't, go talk to that therapist. Uh, she makes mention very briefly, well, you know, that she knows what kind of person she is, implying that the rest of us don't, and I don't necessarily think that's true. I think she knows the kind of person she wants to be seen as, and then she filters a lot of what she does to fit something she's comfortable with. But I would say we know her better than she's willing to know herself in a lot of ways, for better or for worse. And um, I don't think she's the kind of person she thinks she is. So that's the big thing. She's seeing someone else, but it's really new. But she's very back and forth on this whole idea. Um, she says she missed male attention. <laughs> and someone pointed out, like, Chantal has been three days. <laughs> oh, she also says, this is someone else she's seeing that's really new, which I was assuming was Motorcycle Man, but might be someone else. I'm not sure who we had here, but I assume motorcycle guy. She was like, he likes to cuddle. And I'm like, how are they cuddling? Like, from what she's told us so far, they've had encounters in her car in that parking lot. This weekend is the first time she's going over. Do you think they're doing a lot of cuddling over, like, the steering wheel and the, um, the parking brake? Is that, is that what we we think is happening in her Kia? Because I'm having trouble picturing it. Something, <laughs> oh, for want of a calculator, something is not adding up there. Like, I'm sorry, no. Uh, she says she's nervous about having a guy into her house, which might be general nerves, but it sounded a bit more immediate. And I was like, but she said she was going over to his. So I don't understand why you'd be nervous about that. I was under the understanding that the reason the cleaning is becoming such an issue is because not, I mean, I'm sure she would like people over to her house at some point, but because she was having some kind of inspection in the next couple of weeks, but I might be misremembering that, to be honest. Someone asked, done trying to date women. God damn, I wish she was, just so she could stop 
making a mockery of this conversation. She says she's still talking to someone. And um, again, she was like, oh, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to dox them, but let me describe them for you. I, I don't believe the description. I don't believe this is happening. Let's put it that way. She also called herself out in an earlier lie. Do you remember I've expressed my doubts before about how she's like, oh, I've been with women many times in the past. And uh, then she's like, she wonders how sex feels with someone of the same sex. And she claimed to have many encounters. So I don't know. She's, she's sort of uh, still not realized that lies catch up with her because she forgets what she's said. And so she just catches herself out more often than not. But she has said on multiple occasions, because I haven't believed her at all times, that she has had encounters with women before and now she's saying, oh, I wonder what it's like. She feels like she doesn't want to be super attached. I don't think she's capable of the kind of relationship she's describing. She wants things, theoretically, to be very chill and her to be hopping from lover to lover and they're all very mature and open about this and this is just the the wild and quirky life I lead because I'm I'm in demand, but my many lovers are fine with it. And there are people who can live that life. It requires a very different kind of person than Voodie is, but there are people who live that life. It will not be her. She has said again and again that she wants love and she wants romance and she wants someone to want to give her everything, essentially. And I don't find anything wrong with that as a want but it doesn't match up with anything she does. So when she's walk walking around going, oh, I want to, I just want to bang someone, I just want some male attention, I just want sex, I just want to go buy that sex doll, which we'll talk about in a minute. Then she wants romance and loving and caring and to get married and kids. And you're just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you need to take a breath. Personally, I say cut everyone off and just, just be with yourself for a while, which she is claiming she's doing but she still seems very caught up with the idea of the value of herself in relation to having other people one tiny moment when she's trying to distract from that conversation which she's not particularly comfortable with she motions to a mcdonald's and says barbecue chicken will zoom in on that won't she and someone goes barbecue barely covers you anymore and she's like oh and she seemed genuinely like a little bit surprised by that <laughs> i was just like she hasn't yet realized the impact this constant merry-go-round is having, but people are sick of it. Because this is the problem I've had this week, where I look at it and I'm just like, I'm at the point where there's really nothing to be said on this situation. Which is why if I choose to react, I choose to focus on the things that are not her and Nada. There's nowhere to go with that. I mean, Nada seems to be losing his mind a little bit more, but... There's really nowhere to go with it from her perspective, which is the one I'm looking at. So speaking of that sex doll, she uh, has named him Reginald. Apparently he's currently 25% off. She wants to buy him. She asked if we would find it weird if he were in videos. I was like, yes, I would find that extremely weird. And someone mentioned the off disregarded platform of OnlyFans. And she immediately leapt on that like, oh yeah, it'd be a business expense. Now, I think she was joking, but God knows she does some stupid things. And then someone, who are you out there? Who are you? Sent her a super chat and said, Reginald Fund. <laughs> Don't encourage her. And like I said, she seemed to be joking, but no. And she was like, if he, if he, if he, not if it, if he were in live streams, I'd expect you to respect him. Like people have those living baby dolls or whatever. And I was just like, Nah, you bring him into, I'll call him him for your sake, but ugh, you bring him into lives and you get what you get. I'm not respecting that. I will make fun of it. I am not respecting it. She asks, can you be a functional delusional person? I'm just like, Ooh. that's a deeper question that I think we can cover in this. But, uh, oh. Ask yourself, are you a functional person? Because I think there's your answer. Uh, she moves upstairs and then has some, what seems like quite serious chest problems in moving. Uh, she needs a refill on her inhaler. Um, she needs to see the doc for a lot of stuff. It did not sound good. And she's clearly, yet again, been neglecting it. So she seems pretty exhausted, whether it's from the physical movement or from how busy her day was. But she says her day was busy. 
and she just made supper, which confused me because she said, well, she didn't say, she showed her just having McDonald's just then. I thought that was supper. Um, but she starts lamenting over how do people do this every day? And I was like, was this your whole day? Was this you going and getting a meal? Because I hate to break this to you, but most people do more than that every day. And um, she just, you know her. She, she is, how do I put this? She doesn't want to be one of the normal people. It's repulsive to her. So when she's like, oh, how do people do this? She's so above this, you guys. But she's not doing anything particularly exhausting. So then to cut off any criticism she might be having about that, she starts talking about how she feels mentally disabled and like she's always drowning. Now, we've had this conversation, not for a while, but you know, on and off fairly regularly on her channel. And it's the kind of thing where I basically now with her say, look, I would sympathize with this, but at the same time, it only seems to apply when there's something she doesn't want to do. When it's, I'm gonna go spend the weekend with my newly discovered lover, she's got no problems with that. When it's, hey, maybe clean your house, she can't do it, it's, it's impossible. When it's, hey, go do your taxes before you get thrown in jail, it, it's impossible. My mental health just isn't up to it. The mental health that she has claimed she's never been diagnosed on, which we'll get to in a second. But for her to sit there and be like, no, no, my mental health is too bad. I feel like if that were the case, we would see it more consistently. We've seen her before when she's been in a lower ebb and we've seen her when she's been more capable. I'm not saying she's never been depressed in her life. I'm saying it comes up as an excuse more often than not where something she doesn't just want to do comes into play and then so that feels a little bit contrived and it might just be to me you make your own judgment on that but that's how I see it as somebody who has suffered with depression in the past that is how I see how her depression comes on uh, but she did just to go back to this say oh you know I need a proper diagnosis I've never been diagnosed and I was like what what absolutely not so Foodie has been to many professionals. She's been referred by many professionals. She's ignored a lot of appointments and not followed them through, but she's gonna talk in a little bit about how she was on Vyvanse and how she went to the eating disorder clinic. So those are diagnoses, they came up somewhere, or at least she had the opportunity to be diagnosed on many occasion. It was a huge talking point on this channel and in her channel for a long time before the NADA era. So to sit there and be like, no, no doctor has ever told me that. No, many doctors have told you and many opportunities to go to doctors have existed. You've chosen to ignore it or use it as it's convenient to you. That is the difference. She says, look, it's hard to explain. It is sometimes, but in this case, it's just hard to justify why she's not addressing it because she has the time, opportunity, and up until this month, she had the money. Um, she said she needs to go for a proper evaluation and again, had the opportunity many times, but if she's acknowledging that the doctor is the right place for this, the long conversation she has about potential diagnoses, diagnoses, is that right? A potential diagnosis, because I'm not quite sure what the plural is, um, that she has with her chat is inappropriate for her needs. Yeah, because she talks for a while and chats like, oh, ADHD and this and that, and then she's like, oh, maybe. Go to a doctor and don't ignore what they say. You'll get a lot further. We go on to talk about medication. She says she'll never do Vyvanse again, um, which is a drug she was prescribed by a doctor who diagnosed her um, because it's like being on Coke. <laughs> now, I would have to take her word on that as the voice of experience, having never been on Vyvanse or Coke, but she does mention that she hates uppers despite also claiming a coke addiction. So that was an odd conversational point for me. Didn't make a lot of sense. We had a long conversation about farting and shitting, which I, I will not force you through. Frankly, I wish I hadn't listened to it, so I'm not gonna make you, you are welcome. She says she's afraid to get offline, which I can 100% believe. Um, she's afraid to feel lonely that if she gets offline, she doesn't have her online people distracting her and feeding her bullshit and all the rest. She's going to start thinking, well, did she 
do the wrong thing and then she starts reaching out to Nada and all of that again and I know we say it a lot but therapy you shouldn't be afraid to be alone with your own thoughts yeah and if you are that is something you need help with go and get that help she starts talking about spirituality um I have nothing to add here quite frankly I'm not a spiritual person and I don't think Chantel is the person with whom to have a meaningful conversation about it. So it becomes a little bit relevant later, but for now that's really all I have to say on it. Uh, she mentioned she needs a break, but she doesn't know a break from what? Like her break from her life, I suppose, from the way she lives, from the internet would be a great one, but she's not ready for the consequences of any of that. Um, she talks about abortion, specifically her own too. Um, she said it was down to her own irresponsibility. The first time she thinks she missed a pill, she was on the pill, she thinks she missed one. And the second, she was just stupid. In her words, not mine. I'm not going to cover this in detail because I know it's a very hot button issue, particularly with some of the changes that are currently happening in America or have recently happened in America. I can tell you that I am pro-choice. You can love, hate, or feel indifferent to that as you like, but please don't start arguing about it down in the comments. I'm not here for that conversation. The only thing I can really say as it regards to Chantel is I am glad there is not a child in their living situation having to deal with Chantel and Pete being his or her parent. Yeah, that is, that is something I am thankful for. Uh, she then moves on, they're talking about sort of uh, stress and jobs and things like that and someone in the chat mentions, I think, being a dispatcher for, for or a res uh, someone who picks up the phone for the 911, an operator, I had a problem, I was like, responder, no, that's the ambulance. And uh, Chantal mentioned, I don't know if I knew this, but Chantal mentioned that uh, she was once up for a job like that, but she was considered, I suppose, psychologically unfit for it, which shocker but to be completely fair to her and to anyone in that situation it's a very high stress job and i think there are a lot of people myself included that would not be prepared for it uh then something that i did feel a little bit bad for her about she starts talking about the loss of her grams and she gets upset and cries a little bit nothing too dramatic but cries a little bit and says she doesn't know what she'll do when she loses her mom and i agree that would be awful for anyone it would be awful for anyone so that seems terrible but at the same time i don't know if that being the case i don't want to say if because of course that's the case with your mum but that being the case i wish we could see more evidence on channel of her valuing her mother because moments like this when she's like oh i don't know what i'm gonna do so at christmas when she felt it was more important to rage about nada and be up all night on live and get high then go and support her mother who had just lost her own mother in the first Christmas they'd lost her. I think about that and then I think about what she's saying here and they just don't gel, you know? Like, I think Chantal will hate it when she loses her mother. I think she'll be devastated the way she claims to be about her grandmother. But usually these realizations lead to a change in behavior and we're not seeing her value her in life the way she claims to value people in death. And I don't want to be too harsh with that because it is a very real emotion, but this is where we are with Chantel. Like, if you're going to feel terrible, which is a completely natural thing, do something about it while you have the time because it won't be endless, no one's time is, but you have an opportunity to have better memories. So then we circle back around to sort of her own loneliness and how it impacted her in Cuba, which is something she's still trying to rehabilitate. And ultimately, all of this conversation, her own loneliness is the genesis for the whole conversation, in my humble opinion, and who the hell am I, for her interest in spirituality, for her interest in the occult, I think it's all sides of the same coin for her. I think ultimately it's a way for her to have something kind of beyond herself pulling the strings so that when she finishes using up everything and everyone around her, not necessarily has someone to blame, but she has an explanation that doesn't require her to blame herself. That was just the plan and she doesn't know why, you know? 
And I think the question of why is too hard for her because having to reflect on it means having to swallow a few home truths that she does not want to touch. So, you know, explanations outside of herself and that are bigger than her own power are very useful and much easier to take than you could have avoided this and you didn't. There was a bit of conversation about her and Bibi and she talks in more detail about how she cheated on him. And you know, one of the big points she's making with Nada is, I couldn't look at someone I loved and just lie to their face. And we're like, newsflash, he didn't love you. I'm sorry, but that's where we are. She told a story about when BB asked her if, he, if she had been cheating on him. And BB seems to have behaved like a gentleman at the very least, like it was Mother's Day, he didn't cause a scene in front of her mom, like he got through the day, got home, he asked her. So they got home and he asked her outright, did you cheat on me? And she lied to his face. And those are the words she used. Uh, I lied to his face. And then I saw him and I realized, and um, I, I couldn't lie anymore. And I told him the truth and he got really upset. And then she goes on to be like, oh, well, I couldn't lie to, I couldn't lie to someone's face like that. I couldn't do it. And I'm like, but you did do it. And this is, we've had lots of conversations about the idea of truth and how she takes being caught in a lie and admitting to it to the same as telling the truth. And it's not. <laughs> you say you couldn't lie to someone's face. You lied to the person you professed to love. You lied to his face. You just admitted you lied to his face and then say, well, you couldn't. No, you lied. He, he asked you again and you were like, yeah, I did. Because you realized you weren't getting away with it. And then she goes on to say she cheated again and again and she just didn't tell him. Like what, her understanding of exactly what a lie is, it is the most flexible thing about her life. All right, so it ended up with a ton of star sign conversation that doesn't really mean much to me. I'm a Taurus, if it matters at all, uh, but I got nothing to add to it because like I say, it's a fun nonsense to read in the um, newspaper. Like, oh yeah, that sounds like me, but I don't put much stock in it. Other than that, that's everything I got here. So I hope you're all doing well. I'll go and cut out all the coughing I just did in this. <laughs> Any weird cuts, that's what it was. And I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.